Good evening, gang. David Guppel, Thinker Farmer here. It's mid-April 2025. I'm here at the uh, dairy, field pat dairy field paddock and uh, wanted to give y'all a uh, kind of a update. Not really an, well, this is, really isn't an update, more of a uh, kind of a briefing on a silvopasture project that we've done here. Um, so uh, basically uh, this is a part of the dairy field paddock. Um, the dairy field itself is 35 acres and uh, this end of the field has virtually no shade whatsoever. Um, fence line is right over there. Um, you can see a small clump of trees up in that corner. Another few trees there and then uh, a lot of trees over to the uh, west side of the paddock. But you've got a very, very large area here that does not have any shade. And uh, we decided to go ahead and uh, put in four rows of trees, um, 12 trees per row, uh, 40 feet <clears throat> between the trees and uh, also 40 feet between the rows. So it's a 40 foot grid pattern. And uh, we ended up getting all of our uh, materials for uh, protecting these trees from the cattle uh, from Trees for Grazers based out of PA or Pennsylvania. And uh, just a really, really simple, low cost, um, easy labor and uh, easy installation setup. Um, for anybody that has tried protecting trees with multiflora rose bushes, or with uh, wire cages that are clunky and uh, don't really protect them from uh, voles. Um, man, this, this setup really, really seems to be the cat's meow. Um, <clears throat> let me show y'all just kind of the basic hardware and uh, you mulch around the trees. That's kind of the last step. I'm a, I'm a uh, sequential guy, so I'm gonna go through step by step a little bit. So right there, that's your tree. Um, we augered our holes for these trees. We're farmers, we like saving time. And uh, we were in this, this field here, it was the soil, it's spring, so the soil was soft. Um, I don't think it even took me a whole hour no, that, that might be lying. It probably took me just a little over an hour, but still an hour to auger, almost 50 trees, uh, holes for the trees. And uh, yeah, I augered the holes a little deeper than was needed and uh, put some, backfilled some dirt. I didn't want the trees in a hole and then uh, put the trees in. These are vole guards here. Put the uh, stakes in with the trees so that, uh, you don't damage the tree, the roots later. You put the stake in with the tree. And then, uh, I'm really proud of these uh, planter tubes here. You take a six foot, I'm trying to get this down, bear with me gang. And then we, uh, you take a six foot planter tube, slide it over the, uh, slide it over the half inch fiberglass stake put three wraps on it, put a bird cover on top, and then um, you just uh, run your uh, poly wire and then uh, use a cable tie to go ahead and tie it up. And then you've got a, uh, you take aluminum wire, wrap it at least three times or more around the uh, poly wire and then just essentially do a spiral shape down the uh, planter tube to about two feet up from the ground. Um, and this is my personal tip, when in doubt, go a little lower. We had some of the animals yank on the tubes and uh, it was infuriating to watch. I, uh, If I'd had a gun, I might've shot a finisher, but they're finishers, so uh, anyway. It's been two days now since we let animals into them and they're not touching these tubes. They've, they've gotten shocked evidently and they don't wanna mess with them. Um, so training was a little stressful watching. They really didn't do any damage to the trees. The, uh, 
these uh, these guards worked really, really well. Again, this is a really simple design. Um, right now we've got just one solar energizer. Well, let me, let me walk over there briefly before we get into the, we've got one solar energizer. Um, and we've got uh, one fiberglass post on the, the end of each row. Um, and that's what we're using to keep this wire tight at, uh, I mean, there's a little sag, but it's, it's almost six foot high. So cattle can walk under it and graze, you can walk under it. And so it's delivering, that energizer is delivering power to that whole line of trees and the next three lines of trees as well. And we connected, we put them all together. I've got a duck because I'm six foot, but we connected them all together. Um, and then put another couple fiberglass posts going the other direction. And uh, this tree here, ah, trying to hold the camera. We've got eight and a half kilovolts on that tree for any animal that decides to touch it. So, you know, in this case, I think I, uh, yeah, I mean, the the animals first training day, they, they did uh, mess with a couple of the tubes, but now they're not touching them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see. Um, so before, uh, before I close out this video, silvopasture um, is a debatable topic. Some people say they want to do portable shade shelters um, because they want to make hay. Um, I think it was Gordon Hazard I heard said once, the legendary Mississippi grazer, he's passed now, but he said, why would you um, invest a bunch of money in infrastructure in a shade shelter when nature will grow you one more or less for free? I agree with him. Um, so, but there there are a few caveats I would give to the silva pasture. But um, one is, um, if you're in an area where land prices are still relatively low, and there's a lot of idle lease land available, if you're max trying to maximize, which what farmer isn't trying to maximize his time and his money? Um, then you probably need to go after that lease land. For the amount of money you're gonna spend on silver pasture, which isn't that much, this, the time and labor is not that much when you got a simple setup like this, but you, when you could be acquiring more acres of ground, um, you know, lease land and whatnot, that makes more sense from a, from a business standpoint, if the land is available. Um, in a lot of parts of the country now, Land prices are going up. Lease land is not as readily available. Populations are increasing. Um, and so if you um, you don't have additional lease land to capitalize your business with, or capitalize into, then uh, the next area to increase your solar collection is to look up. There's a lot of vertical sunlight that's free. The government hasn't figured out how to tax it yet. And you can go ahead and put in trees, and you've got to own the land to do this, clearly. And uh, you're gonna receive benefits in terms of shelter, shade, manure distribution, drought resiliency, and also feed for livestock um, during dry times, whether it's uh, mast feed, where the fr it's fruit or nuts, or pods that actually drop off for the animals to eat. Or um, you can end up doing coppicing, cutting, cutting off uh, branches and whatnot. Um, but for a farmer, at the end of the day, we are in the solar collection business. And uh, that is what, what it's all about. First, you need to maximize, you know, your, your horizontal solar panel of grass. But once you've done that, um, playing the long game, there's all this solar energy that needs to be harvested. Anyway, um, check them out y'all uh, trees for grazers um, consider doing some silver pasture plantings if you own land if, if land prices are high which for most of us seems like everything's gone up um, this is playing the long game and, and this is definitely 
where the future is in uh, investing on your farms for your long-term resiliency. And uh, yeah, so the website is treesforgrazers.com. Uh, they're based out of PA and uh, great, great guys there, great consulting, um, great materials. And uh, I'll leave you all with that. Blessings for the journey, gang. And keep it real.